So for, for the viewers, I've already given your introduction. I told that you work in PayPal, you work for companies like Fractal and everything. So could you just tell us about who you are and what the eight, past eight years of your journey has been to the audience? Sure, definitely. The past eight years have been really fascinating. I mean, uh, the journey, as, as any journey would look like, like a lot of ups and downs in the industry as well, in my professional life as well. So I started my career working with Music Mind 2016. So it's been almost eight years now that, uh, you know, I've been a part of a data and analytics industry. And uh, post that, you know, I, um, I was working with Mu Sigma in 2016. I worked there for a couple of years, and then I moved to a company called Fractal, which was again pure data science and analytics role. And um, from there, I actually got a chance to work with one of the biggest search engine of the world, right? And that was the client that I was, you know, catering to. I worked there for three years, and then I actually moved to product-based organizations. So the first organization that I worked with was. Um, Vista, and then now I'm working with PayPal as a data scientist. So this is how you know the kind of structure look like looks like uh, from from company standpoint. Yeah. Okay, but why data analytics? Well, because eight years back, data analytics was not that of a boom. Because right now, if somebody gets into data analytics, they get to know the way. People are telling it's a boom. That is why they're following the trend. But eight years back, did you have any insider information? Like how did it work? No, 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 not really. So it was, it was, it was. I, I, I would say it was a mere coincidence because I actually got placed in three different companies in my, um, okay. uh, in my, in my campus placement, right? And I had like three options, and then uh, because of the reason, because of the salary reasons, <laughs> I was getting better salary there. So I chose company which was, um, uh, which was Mu Sigma at that point in time. And that is how it all started. And as as soon as I entered into the organization, I I explored more of it, and I explored the kind of work, the nature of work that we do in in terms of um, in, in the field of data science and analytics. And I kind of like that because I never was always into you know a pure coding based um, structure or the kind of job that I would I was looking at. I was always um, I was always a people person, and I always wanted to be involved around people. And uh, what what I believe is data science and analytics industry, uh, because you are actually solving business problems, right? The real world problems that that you are catering to, you you are actually dealing with people. You are just not writing codes. You are actually solving business problems. Mm -hmm. So that is kind of kept exciting me about the job, and that is how I continued in the field. Yeah. Okay, you told there were certain challenges during your college days, and even the first couple of months in the company so could you just tell viewers about how what were the challenges and how did you overcome it hmm good question so <laughs> as soon as actually you know uh, I moved to a new city uh, which was I was actually pursuing my graduation from Chandigarh and from Chandigarh I moved I'd moved to Bangalore mm -hmm. right and you 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 know the spectrum of culture that from Chandigarh from Punjab to to a state Karnataka mm -hmm. Right, uh, and you know, dealing with new people, there were new situations, and at the same time, you know, you're transitioning from a from a, from campus to corporate. Right, it's it's altogether a different world. Now, from there, uh, what the kind of challenges that I had faced was, uh, the first company that I was in, they had like rigorous trainings training processes, and they had like screening processes, and people were let go off because of if, if they were not performing really well. And that was the kind of pressurized situation that I was I was put in right after my uh, right after my graduation, and I was not ready for it to be honest. Mm -hmm. And because I had no idea, I I always thought that it would be a very easy ride. You know, you will just get a salary, you will just uh, you know work for eight hours, and then you'll just go. But the thing is, the good thing was that you know I actually got a, got to learn a lot um, during that process. Mm -hmm. You know, we had to spend like. Four days learning a learning a particular stream. For example, there were a couple of subjects that we had to uh, we had to learn or probably um, undergo a training on. And then on the fifth day, we used to have a test, like like a literal test, like like we used to have in our colleges, right? And then we had to clear those examinations, and then accordingly the results were out, and we had to we were decided. Our fate was decided. <laughs> so okay, so you told some people to let go. So 
like for example there are many le people let go of according to whatever you said like during the initial training process so what made you that cream crow what made you set yourself apart from them like was it was it because you are good at something and they were not ready for it or was it your mindset to work towards a company like that no to be honest um actually i was also not amongst the in my first company i was also not amongst the high performance mm -hmm. uh, high performers right so i was also um, uh, you know th there were actually five subjects and we had to clear like three or four i don't mm -hmm. uh, i just don't really remember uh, the number so i i actually failed in for the first subject which was python at that point in time and i had scored 69 mm -hmm. and i think um, when i was in your college i was discussing yes. about this as well right so uh, and the the passing percentage was 70 70% just so you know failing just by one uh, so that 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 doesn't feel good mm -hmm. so that was the first and this and, and there was another subject i think that was r i mean i had to reappear for this python and i had scored more than 90 that was a bravo movement okay. but nice. uh, but then again um, i had to reappear for r and mm -hmm. i flunked so i i actually just just passed i was i, I was not amongst the toppers there were a lot of um, you know high scoring people and you know high performers so uh, i was also facing that that level of challenges but what kept me going was i actually kept on working harder and harder and harder uh, because the, all of those skills, because I was coming in from an electronics and communication background, I had never gone through these trainings or uh, these subjects. So these were all new to me. So that is how it all. Okay. So ENC, data science, how, how was the resume shortlisted? Because they require a certain set of skills uh, for data science because it's very, very hard. I'm also a data science student myself because it is hard for me since I'm from a BBA background. It is hmm. people are like, okay, you might find difficulties, but ENC, how did you get that? So uh, mine was engineering college, mm -hmm. right? So they had actually come to um, pick from the engineering graduates. Mm -hmm. So that is how it was. And uh, there was no certain criteria because we had, I, I did not have any data science project mm -hmm. in, in my resume at that point in time. Mm -hmm. But at that point in time, I mean, the, uh, it, it was it, it used to just come in um, the company used to be uh, part of our college campus placements and that is how they had come and everybody was uh, you know everybody was allowed to more everybody who who actually has an aggregate percentage of more than 60 percent they were allowed to sit for the for the first initial round mm -hmm. but yeah that's uh, they it was not merely based on resume shortlisting but it was there was a test which actually uh, which actually, actually, we can discuss about it. That's a great point. So the test actually um, encapsulates a lot of different things that you, that you would need in data science and analytics industry. For example, the test included your aptitude, the logical reasoning, uh, the business understanding, how much business understanding that you have, right? And there were a lot of technology-based questions as well. So this is how um, I got shortlisted. Probably I had uh, a, a little bit Fair, mm -hmm. fair understanding around these three. Mm -hmm. So that is how I short, got shortlisted. And there were a couple of rounds that we can talk about in the how do you know interview processes look like mm -hmm. uh, in data science and analytics. Could you just shed some light on that just two to three minutes? Because because for the people to know what, what goes on in the real battlefield over there. It's all good until your sh resume is shortlisted. Then when you get into the real nitty gritty of it, it is very hard. Because I had an interview right now, just a mock interview. And it was real. She was grilling me like anything. <laughs> so I what, what was that that they they were asking you that they got drilled? Uh, how would you manage the finances of a company? Tell me everything about finance. You know, okay, you hmm. want to get into business analytics. Get into business analytics. How would you do that? Give, tell me marketing gimmicks. What you would do for this? <laughs> Every single subject I was challenged. So yeah, that was that was a mock interview by the way for thirty minutes. Every mm -hmm. MBA, whatever knowledge I had, she just sucked it sucked it out of me. So yeah. That is actually that is actually true. So once you are into the um, on the floor, right? Mm -hmm. So you actually get a chance to work with uh, various teams. Mm -hmm. You actually get a chance to work with finance. You get a chance to work with the risk team, and uh, finance will be there. Risk will be there, and then a lot of marketing teams will be there. Mm -hmm. You'll be catering to product managers. So a lot of different people from different backgrounds. You'll be you'll actually get a chance to work with them mm -hmm. very closely. So that's actually good and you actually need to have a better bet, better business understanding. Mm. So let's say if they are actually working on a certain project, why is why is the question that 
any business analyst should ask why are we actually mm -hmm. working on it in the first first place right mm -hmm. where is it going to land us right what is the end goal of any any given project mm -hmm. right so that's that's actually good if you are actually getting that grill already you're getting that so yeah. how was and it for you oh, sorry yeah, yeah to answer that question on on the interview process so my first interview process i mean i had um, i actually got shortlisted in ibm and then i had an offer from mm -hmm. wipro and then mu sigma so the in, in when you are in college right the interview processes are pretty different than what you would expect when you are um, experienced mm -hmm. in in the industry already so what you can expect is they will actually look at how keen are you to learn new stuff right that is that is something that they are looking at so the processes will look like uh, you know they they'll ask you some questions which you might probably don't know when you are in in, in your college mm -hmm. but they they just want to understand if you are you know um, ready to learn if you are if you are uh, willing to learn new things explore new things or you are just saying okay i don't know i ju i just can't do it you know they don't want that kind of attitude right so the processes actually looked like were um, the first round was as as i mentioned right there was a written test which was i think business technology maths logical reasoning aptitude test so this was i think two two and a half hours long test and people got shortlisted and then they had a group discussion right and group discussion was uh, i don't remember the topic mm -hmm. because it's been 8 years now um so gd and then uh, there were couple of rounds with the hr and then there was a vp or somebody from cxo level was was there for the campus placements so we had a round uh, with with him so no no not a lot of technical questions were asked even when okay. we were undergraduate or just graduating yeah okay from then to now you had some glory moments in your life i heard that you work for google for for a for a certain well as your client another big companies could you tell your experience from there to here from a to b yeah yeah definitely so uh, they, that experience has been really um, i i actually uh, whenever i remember that experience it it actually feels like a leap mm -hmm. right because because I, when i was uh, in my first organization i was not very confident when i actually um, had exited from that organization when i actually took an exit from that organization so from there to working with the with the one of the biggest search engine of the world right and you are single handedly uh, delivering the projects to them and working working very closely with the with the pms or let's say with the with the marketing managers there so that that journey has been really fascinating and i actually got a chance to work on multiple projects with google mm -hmm. so the first project that i was working with was uh, with a clustering a clustering project mm -hmm wherein we had to you, do you know what smbs are small and medium businesses yes, okay. right so we we were actually uh, there was a project where we had to strategize or we had to basically build strategies to market small and medium businesses yeah. that are uh, that exist in google's ecosystem so we were kind of working for for those uh, example, for those like what are, what were they because i have so for example uh, so right now what what you will see a lot of businesses are doing are uh, they are actually moving to digital mm -hmm. platform right for advertising so now uh, we wanted to we wanted to uh, cluster our smb mm -hmm. right or let's say we actually had a, had a survey in 26 different countries right and in those 26 different countries we had like 1000 smbs 1000 businesses okay. per country so on an on an average we had like 1000 businesses per country is so 26000 responses so we actually got an understanding of what is their online average spend right so are they even spending online and then uh, do are they, what is the awareness that they have about these search engines or the or the advertising platforms that advertise digitally right so based on that we actually categorized those as smbs so for example let's say we we stay in our local areas right yeah. uh, rural indian uh, rural areas where people probably might not even have an understanding of what google is right our local kiryana store probably they might not even know about it so we actually categorized them as a sec separate bucket versus there was another bucket where the average online spend was really high the awareness about google was really high the consideration was really high 
you know that so that that was a kind of clustering project and then we ha we came up with seven different clusters and to accommodate those seven different clusters we actually uh what we actually did was strategize or um so we actually devised different marketing strategies to target them better so you can't let go of customers who are you know uh, who are already spending high high with google so you you could just can't say okay they're spending high let them go let them do whatever they want to do you would want to incentivize them even more now how do you actually do that so those were the kind of things that we actually discussed with with the global marketing head of google at that point in time and like how did you come about this project because this is quite a big project for any company to give out they mm -hmm. wouldn't give out to any fresher or any person who is not competent enough like what me what set you apart that okay we'll give rohit this project in google and he'll represent mm -hmm. our company so what made that company give you that confidence that, okay rohit is the one yep so i actually had a discussion with my manager at that point in time uh, at at fractal mm -hmm. right and so he was like this is the project this is the client he's really i mean he's a big guy and this and that so i i was like okay so uh, i mean you just you i i just had an attitude of okay i just have a work mm -hmm. if i think that that's a big guy and mm -hmm. that is something that i i just i just can't uh agar main wo pressure le lunga so i will not be able to perform right yes. if i if i take that pressure so for me it was like just like a normal project mm -hmm. like like any other project that i would cater to i was just giving in my 100% uh i was i was just confident about my work and at the same time i was keen to learn and i was actually reaching out to multiple people who had already worked on a very similar project in the company itself so i was constantly networking i was constantly learning and i was constantly um i i constantly made sure that you know i am working hard and uh, delivering things on the right time and it doesn't happen like uh, uh, the project is given and after 3 months they will ask okay what is happening so you will have you know weekly connects with the with the uh, with the clients you will actually give them an update uh, on what's going on so you will get an alignment on uh, what's expected and what you're working on so like like that it you know it keeps on going and um, you actually reach to a point where people are aligned and everybody is is good yeah. and what other than google the big giants have you worked with paypal right now <laughs> yeah so how is paypal right now paypal is it is it major in india right now because is it entering the upi space like how is it so yeah so i i work with peer to peer so that doesn't exist mm -hmm. in india at the moment so our biggest markets are uh, the united states Uh, Great Britain and Germany. So these are the three major markets that we cater to. Mm -hmm. So P2P is is probably you know we get most of the revenue from also Canada. Mm -hmm. So most of the revenue comes in from these countries. Mm -hmm. We don't have um, P2P uh, as of now in India. And what kind of projects do you work in currently? Yeah. So I I actually work in um, another fascinating um, stream that I would say right now in the industry is experimentation, A/B testing. If you have heard about it. Oh no, could you? Elaborate. Okay, so for example, let's say um, you sell a pro product. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you 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 feel let's say you have an offline shop. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, offline shop mm -hmm. is is there something that you like or you want to open a business? Uh, I would like to open a business in the event management space, if that is okay. Okay, yeah. management space. So can you can you something uh, which is product based? Any product? Is that just just go up go? product i would say i had an idea wherein uh, there is an app for everything there is an app for food swiggy there is an app for uh, cleaning a house urban club so mm. now urban company now i would like a platform wherein all artists could come like instagram is one platform but if i would like to hire an artist i would have to search their instagram profile do all that so i would like to have a platform wherein all the artists could come together for example i need a tabla player who has been playing tabla for 10 years and i want him to sing in bollywood song so that hmm. will be the filters and i could select that particular artist for example i get an artist called xyz so then i could hmm. select that artist according to my preference i need a dancer i need a rapper i need a dj so that is a one product where i was thinking it could be doable you wouldn't believe but this is exactly what i had in mind a couple <laughs> of years back <laughs> <laughs> okay this is this is something that i was also you know i uh, me and one of my friend were also discussing about this idea of having you know because right now in india a lot of shift has been happening yes. from uh, outside parties to house parties mm -hmm. and people would actually really need this yes. 
So that is that is what we were discussing. We'll about. talk about it. Be- yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. So yeah. So um, let's say you you plan to open this this mm-hmm. you plan to launch this app of yours mm-hmm. where you call it as artistries mm-hmm. or whatever, mm-hmm. okay. right? So let's say um, you you see that people are coming to your app, mm-hmm. but they're not uh, the engagement is not really high. Mm-hmm. Let's say, mm-hmm. you know, they they're coming and then they are just bouncing off. Mm-hmm. Let's say that's the scenario. That's something that you are observing. So, or what what we actually do is, let's say, um, on your app on your home page, let's say you have a filter option or something. Mm-hmm. So what happens is A A B testing is you actually uh, from your population, your population will be your entire audience, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You actually divide your population into two segments, which you call them as A and B, mm-hmm. right? A is A is called as control. Mm-hmm. It could be if the, it is an A B test, it will be control versus test. Mm-hmm. If it is like A B C test, mm-hmm. so you will have two variants and the control. So control is something where there will be no shift. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you, I I'm Good. I hope that I'm able to explain um, it. So mm-hmm. when I say control, for example, uh, Vikhyat ko a uh, couple of days back before I launched an experiment, mm-hmm. uh, you could see. a certain screen on the on your app okay, right okay. and now i actually changed something on the screen let's say mm-hmm. i moved the logo towards the bottom or towards the right hand side mm-hmm. now the logo has been shifted to the right because earlier what was happening because of the logo people were could not actually filter or some some issue was happening on the screen yeah, yeah, right got it, got it. now if i have actually changed that will actually become my variant got it got it right So fifty. Let's say I divide my entire population into fifty-fifty, and that population is randomized, uh, randomly divide. Uh, I mean, so that there are no biases, mm-hmm. right? So you actually then um, evaluate the performance of that control mm-hmm. where there is no no change that has happened for the po- for for people, mm-hmm. and you actually also look at the performance of. those 50% like let's say let's say the north star metric then you actually look at the north star metric mm-hmm. let's say the north star metric is major trade from home page to the next page yes. let's say it could be a product page mm-hmm. specific product page now how many people are actually moving from home to product page yes. now because the logo has shifted mm-hmm. people are able to filter better or the screen is uh, neat and clean now mm-hmm. right so let's say for control the um, the major rate from home to the product page was let's say 10% and now it has moved to 15% mm. so then you actually look at this 10% and 15% if this is statistically significant you just can't look at the two percentages and say okay 10% 15% is greater than 10% so it really worked yes. right so you actually need to apply statistics on the top of it mm. to kind of understand okay what is is the change real okay so is this a new thing or is it an existing no 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 No, no, it's it's been there for uh, okay. for a long time. I got to know about it for the first time. I thought it is all about Power BI dashboards, Python, SQL, but this that is there. I mean, SQL is SQL is the bread and butter for uh, analytics, right? Mm-hmm. That's one. Mm-hmm. And then um, any visualization tool you actually learn. For example, I I wo- I have worked on uh, Looker. I have worked on Data Studio. I have worked on Tableau. I uh, for a very short span of time when i was working with um, uh with another company which was again a search engine in, in the us mm-hmm. i was working on on par bi but that was for a very shorter uh shorter mm-hmm. span mm-hmm. but i would say that if you actually know any any single uh data visualization tool the other tools are very are quite similar mm-hmm. you you can actually get a hang of it and uh, you told sql is the bread and butter of data science So how how so would you say that like do you use it across like is it is it the only platform you use? Not the only platform that I've used, mm-hmm. but that's the kind of platform that I've used across all the companies. Hmm. Okay, so, so SQL. SQL and I would say Python. These are the two two tools that I have been you know I have used extensively for most of my projects. And how is the difficulty level like? Is it easy? Is it hard? It's it's uh, once you get a hang of it, it's. pretty straightforward and because it it's all about understanding the backend data right how your tables are structured and because writing a sql query is not um, not that hard right and it will not be i don't know what you guys are preparing for right now mm-hmm. in your uh, you know when you are graduating mm-hmm. uh, but the level of sql that you would actually use in the industry wouldn't be really hard okay so okay uh, i get it python power bi okay but now you get a data 
but how do you think what do i want from that data how do you think okay i have got a data for example paypal's conversion rate from uh, from the app store something like that basic data now how would you make out stories from that through visualization through python like how do you go about it? is there any process you follow or is it like the company tells you okay rohit find me this 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 or is that or it or is it something that you have a total call on like how do you think about the process it's both ways so uh, it's actually uh, as i as i mentioned right there are weekly uh, the cadence set right mm -hmm. uh, on how you actually collaborate with different stakeholders so those cadences are set because uh, to get an alignment on on what's ex uh, what's expected and what you're working on right mm -hmm. so they, there mm -hmm. you actually kind of get um, their uh, contribution as well like for example if you're working with product managers so you will actually get a contribution from them as well on how they are expecting the results to be look like okay. right so um, that is how it, it always go and um, it, it's actually as you mentioned right how do you actually storyboard is mm -hmm. one of the key aspect of how you deliver your results mm -hmm. it is you know uh, you might have a, a very fascinating output but if you are not able to present it in a right way uh, probably won't help so is there any uh, mental thought process you go through okay now i want to find this so what are the key data i would write it's all it's always uh, it's always a logical mm -hmm. approach to it mm -hmm. right so um, how how you actually go about this data is for even even before you actually get into the logical aspect of it you need to understand the business first mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. if you have an understanding of uh, of business okay this is this is what is expected if i am actually launching this experiment let's say so you would actually need to understand okay this is where the customers would land this is what this is what uh, this is the kind of friction that they might face and this is the next page that they would actually get into these are the kind of buttons that they will actually have on the screen probably they can click on this they can click on that how what is the average scroll, scroll depth on that page right so this is these are the kind of things that you actually get an um, get a gist of after you know the business and once you know the business then you have a logical flow in mind and that is how you start looking at the data okay this is the first data point that i should look at this is the second data point that i should look at and then you actually build a story on the top of it right and then when you present it so everybody will be aligned because product uh, managers let's say they they already know okay this is how the screens are set up mm -hmm. this is how the interaction should happen and this is how i would actually expect my uh, customers to go th from one page to another to another to another mm -hmm. let's say i'm just taking an example right so mm -hmm. business understanding and then putting the logic on top of it and then uh, finally building a story on top of what insights you have gotten from your data so is is the key that i follow the last thing about your job what are the challenges you face right now because of the work from home work from office work from anywhere like how how do you balance that definitely i think you've already answered that mm. uh, in your question itself mm. one of the challenges that that uh, i think most of the corporates right now are facing is i mean work from home is pretty i mean you are comfortable sitting in, in your own places but at the same time it comes with a cost right um because you don't earlier what what was happening was you actually uh, used to meet a lot of people mm -hmm. right in the office you you used to have in person meetings you you actually used to get in together in the meeting rooms discuss uh, different you know brainstorming sessions used to be there but now i i believe that that gap is uh, i mean we haven't been able to bridge that gap even after um, you know 3 or 4 years of uh, working from home so that that gap i i believe is still missing and and also i i believe for any human being i think the person in person interaction or human interaction is very important you don't really get right um, when you are when you are at home so yeah okay uh, one last thing uh, if for example now you work in you told as human interaction it does it hamper your work for example now you have to communicate something with the product manager is does it help to do like online google meets or do you do that microsoft teams or is it is more effective when you speak to him in person for example okay i have this this change i have this this is there any update can you give me a data for this thing like how no i think uh, mm -hmm. that work work level uh, work wise on a on a day to day level that is that is still manageable i would say mm -hmm. right you actually get a chance to speak to you can always uh, connect with with the uh, with the pms or with the with the stakeholders with whom you are working mm -hmm. with
but at the same time uh, on a longer base longer term basis i i feel there's there's a gap you actually need that human interaction but on a work basis at a daily level it doesn't hamper much one personal question is data science mm-hmm. all about computer mein baitho excel banao spreadsheet banao power bi dashboards banao or do we have something where we could speak to a team of amazing individuals like how is it like is it totally back end like engineers do or how is it that like a new pers- give no, a no. new perspective like how is it it is it is um if if i've understood mm-hmm. your question correctly mm-hmm. so the question is is it just you just code at the back end and you just deliver the result or is it you are actually exactly. working with the business real time exactly that is the thing so it is uh, it is actually um you actually work with the people right mm-hmm. uh, and you are actually delivering results mm-hmm. and you are actually business solving business problems mm-hmm. so at the end of the day you are the one who are actually on the forefront uh, who who is actually working with mm-hmm. uh, working with mm, working with people from various teams mm-hmm. and you are impacting the business so you always i i don't see any role in data science which will be uh at the back end so you'll always be in the forefront um, of so I, i you know i i get an invitation from most of the meetings that are you know business driven or where the business decisions are taken in any given company so to answer that question you'll always be on the forefront so good luck so you work across teams be it hr be it finance so you should know yeah. a lot of everything so that depends on yeah so that depends on the kind of uh, the kind of project that you're working on for example if you're working on let's say um any any problem which is related to finance mm-hmm. right and uh, let's say any 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 analysis or any change that you are that you are um planning to execute that will actually impact the finances of the company mm-hmm. so that is when you actually get to work with the finance team because mm-hmm. they will be the ones who will um uh, who will actually ask you okay what will happen to my pnls because every every individual in the organization will have an ownership of certain pnls right so that that actually depends on the nature of project that you're working on it was quite insightful so now okay you have done everything but could you just tell just for the technical aspect for me to know tools and technologies you use on a daily basis and what would you suggest a fresher to start off with i think uh, that is something that we've already discussed the phone number 1 mm-hmm. again i'll repeat mm-hmm. sql mm-hmm. that is something that you should uh, know it i think most of the interviews mm-hmm. i still go through right um are uh, you know what the entire rounds are based on sql because that's the that mm-hmm. that's how it is so sql make sure that you you are aware about it mm-hmm. and you know it thoroughly okay number 1 number 2 is python right and a uh, number 3 is for to present any results again you would actually need a data visualization tool mm. so that is again very very important for you to um, uh, um, you know for or anybody to to uh, to step into the industry mm. and work effectively so that's uh, that's another kind of tool mm. and on top of it you actually need um, skills like stakeholder management you actually need uh how do you actually deal with people like stay when i say stakeholder management it is like managing different people with whom you are working like how do you uh, you know for example how uh, one is your your approach that i want to you know you're giving in your 100% mm-hmm. that's one mm-hmm. at the same time you need to be smart enough mm-hmm. right where your communications are very uh, your communication is very intact and you're proactively communicating with the on the updates and all of that stuff but for i mean if you are just talking about the tools and technologies a fresher should learn mm-hmm. that's python um sql r but not not used very you know okay it's not in high demand right now mm-hmm. so python is one sql is one data visualization tool mm-hmm. is another and excel is again mm-hmm. don't underestimate that excel is one of the tools that you know because as as one of the questions also you you mentioned right data science make excel ki sheet excel ki sheet hi banani hoti hai lekin excel don't underestimate that it has a lot of uh, capabilities to it so something new stakeholder management that was actually something new i got to know because everybody says sql python excel 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 but stakeholder management and whatever you told that hmm. that is also taken into consideration right now because i i had i thought it was just like okay excel sheets like i told ha huh, okay uh, 
got a new perspective on what things are you have been through a lot you have been through a lot in your life you been like you fa- faced you, we faced companies where in they challenge you in different ways you got out of it so any any one thing any one person or any one advice that helped you overcome all of these challenges hmm so uh, i think um when i was in my first organization right mm-hmm. as i mentioned mm-hmm. right i was not having a very good time and uh, i wanted to quit that organization so i actually spoke to my family at that point in time and um, what happened was i was i was so uh uh i was so stressful at that point in time that i wanted to quit but at the same time i couldn't quit because that i always you always had have that anxiety right mm-hmm. or kuch milega ya nahi right because that's a first job and then you haven't been um, you haven't really kabhi interview diya hi nahi hai Uh, after being uh, you know you just work for 2 years or so and then um, we actually then at that point in time in life i realized that the best advisors uh, are actually sitting at home that they are our parents so i actually spoke to my dad right and he told me okay if you are not liking it just quit and that is just that is exactly what he said and that was the day when i actually decided to quit and that is the day when i actually learned that quitting is not failing right i always used to believe that you know quitting is if you quit you fail no yes. but quitting is actually you are you, i i just because the kind of situation that i was in at that point in time um i i was i mean it it was not the place where i actually you know with i actually belong right so it was always better to actually step out of it take that step and uh, you you need, you can always prioritize yourself mm. right on top of everything yeah okay well failing is not quitting i think <laughs> nice yeah. nice actually actually really really great com- okay mm-hmm. huh quitting is not failing you actually uh, spoke uh, that but i got the gist <laughs> of it because it's yeah. too much to take in because this is a completely new perspective people tell if you quit you're a loser that's it that's all that's the end that's all we listen mm-hmm. are kya karoge quit hi karo kya kya dar kyu raha hai tu hmm. but knowing that but i actually because i'd quit at that point in time that is that is uh, why i could actually hmm. grow yes, in my career yes. otherwise i would have been in the same place um, keep i mean keeping my stress yes. along so and then it wouldn't have helped me anyway so it's a good decision you have taken so Okay, you have the floor open any one quote anything you want to leave your words your the world right now because this is going on the internet and this is my one of my first podcast so mm-hmm. anything you would like to say firstly congratulations and i'm really happy that you you know you you've decided to yes. start with your own mm-hmm. podcast mm-hmm. really happy about it thank you so and much and i'm even happier to be a part of it mm-hmm. you know the day when you had reached out and you you you, you mentioned about this i was super happy to see okay people are actually you know <laughs> podcast kar rahe hain mm-hmm. yes so uh, yeah quote i would say um, hmm quote i would say uh, i think things happen mm-hmm. right and everybody faces um, something or the other in their own lives and you will also face something some things good some things will align with what you have planned some things will might not align with what you have planned mm-hmm. so just learn from those events and just let go i mean just don't get stuck because if you get stuck you will just stay there yeah it is always better to uh, for the river to keep flowing otherwise it will just yes foul smell aayega nahi to so great 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 session with you great session with you so if we have if the viewers have anything to reach out to you they could reach out to you on linkedin or instagram right yeah Yeah. And uh, to yeah. to the viewers he also does corporate he also comes to colleges and give you give you talks on the industry and how it is that is why that is how I connected with him. So if anybody is interested to talk to him or reach out to him please do reach out I'll leave all his social links on the, on the description down below. And once again Roy thank you thank you thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my god. Let me show you what